that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again. <laughs> Take heed the 
queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she, as her attendant, hath a lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the force wild. But she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery? Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck. You do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakst all right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. But Rome, fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress would that he were gone. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What jealous Oberon, fairy skipheads, I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, wrath. My gentle buck, come hither. Thou rememberest. Since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin, dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember! That time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid. All armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal throned by the west and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. <gasps> but I might spy young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched <laughs> in the chaste beams of the watery moon and the imperial votaress passed on in maiden meditations, <laughs> fancy free. But marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower before milk white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make a man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me that flower, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a garnel round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once the juice of this, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep pour the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion or bear or wolf or bull, on meddling monkey or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> welcome, wanderer. Hi, there it is. <laughs> I pray they give him me! I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite o'er canopied with luscious woodpine, 
with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, reed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Mm. Take thou some of it. Seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes. But do it ere uh, the first thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he has on. Ah, effect it with some care that he may prove more fond upon her than she upon her love. Ah, Look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Just a bunch of Angelinos! <laughs> oh, you proud of that? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian find I none, on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force and stirring love. Night and silence. Who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Oh, pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Chur! Distracted fear and left sweet 
pyramids translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Tartania waked and straightway loved her. I see. 
no bliss. Curse be thy stones for thus deceiving me. Therefore, be insensible, me thinks should cast again. <laughs> no, no, ma'am, no, he should not. <laughs> you see, uh, deceiving me is this piece cute. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see, it'll fall pad as I told you. Oh, look, yonder she comes. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair pyramids and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones. <laughs> thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice. And I can hear my Thisbe's face! Oh, no, come on! Uh, Thisbe! My love thou art, my love I think! Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace! And like Lymander, am I trusty still? And I, like Helen, till the fates me kill! Not Shaphalus to Procris was so true! As Shaphalus to Procris, I to you! Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall! so, and being done, the swall away doth go. Where is my love? It's happened. 
everyone lets forth his sprite in the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate's team from the presence of the sun following darkness like a dream. Now our frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust behind the door. Through this house give glimmering light <laughs> by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar. Hand in hand. With fairy grace will we sing and bless this place. Here. Before you go, just a few short words on the nature of free Shakespeare, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 